And when I was moving to fifth, fifth grade, I asked my mom how much money I had in my personal savings account. That savings account was located under her mattress someplace, where she was saving every other Saturday 10 or 5 or 8 pesos. And guess what? I have enough money to buy one book for the first time in my young life, I was able to open the plastic bag of that book and say, this book belongs to Nelson on the first line. Before that, every line was like four lines before, and then my name. And every, every book was used. And then my boss in the mechanic garage, after he heard that I did it, that I saved money to buy a book, he bought me a second book. So the same year, for the first time in my life, I was able to go to school with two uh, new books. And this is just a regular condition, regular situation that happens today with many of our children in the Dominican Republic. My two sisters, uh, they were even younger than me when they found uh, ways, I don't really know how they learned to do it, but they were needling. They got these needles and, and strings and they will create beautiful uh, things with their needling. Like you can put them on a table, or you can put it on a chair, and they will sell those. My mother will sell it to her friends at church, and the same, the money that they made will help them for their education, help them to uh, help pay for some of the food that we eat at home. So everybody in my house, my father and all the kids, very early in our age, we have to find ways to help on that. And this is part of the situation, the reality of what's going on in the Dominican Republic and what we do today as Vision Trust in the Dominican Republic is uh, the Lord has given us the opportunity by people like you in the United States to create an, an area within those communities that we can bless those children and help them in a way that they can have an opportunity for their future. <clears throat> I want you to look at this, this guy here on the, uh, on the bottom, this guy here. When I took this picture, it was like six years ago. I didn't realize about this guy until I was doing something like this in a church in Texas. That this guy was playing with an old tire of a motorcycle. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. That's his toy. And this is a, it's not a, it's not an Xbox or a Nintendo or something, <laughs> but for him, it's a great thing that he can just walk by that little, little street and alley and play with an old motorcycle tire. And this building that you see there is even better today. This is one of the places where we're blessing the children in the Dominican Republic. The picture that you saw of the community was taken from the top of that building. It's located in one of those uh, huge places where you have thousands of people living one on top of the other. But the building itself is beautiful, but it's even more beautiful to find the people that are actually living or staying or receiving the blessings inside the ministry. And this is all the children. This is just a regular class, probably a fourth grade in our school. And those children, when they come to this facility, this building, the classroom itself, give them a hope. Because just the environment inside that building is totally different to what they see on a daily basis how they're growing in their own community. We are providing for those children a place where they can get an education and they don't have to buy almost anything that they need to come to school. We provide almost everything that they need. There's also a place where they can uh, see the progress on their education and get graduated. This is a photo of children in our program that was taken just a month ago, August the 7th. These are children that graduated from 12th grade, the first class in the program that you see the picture. They graduated out of high school in that community of Herrera. Children, some of them, I, I think 12 or 13 of them, were with us in our program when they were only three years old. So they grew up with, within the program until just a month ago that they graduated. Now, why is this picture here? I remember uh, about 10 years ago, nine years ago, I had a team in my country, just a mission team. And I got this phone call from my sister telling me that one of my friends lost his brother in, a, in an accident. So I left the team working on the site and I went to meet my, my friend. In my community where I grew up, when somebody passed away, you don't go to the funeral home. You go to the house where that people live because first there's no money to pay for the funeral home 
and then everybody knows where you go, where you, where you live. So in the street where that, my friend was born and, he, and the place where he was staying, uh, where there was maybe 100 people outside. And by some automatic decision, there was a circus, a circle built with all of the friends of mine when we were growing in the community. And I sat in a chair and I looked around and I saw all of my friends that I grew up with, guys that were with me in fourth, fifth grade. And as I was talking to them and they were talking to me, I realized that out of those 20, 25 guys, only one other person in that group besides myself made it all the way to high school. And I was the only one guy actually made it, making it out of college for that group. So it's a whole record for the community when somebody actually made it through high school. And you can imagine if you have to work four hours a day or five hours a day and then go to school the other hours a day, when do you do your homework? When do you really uh, develop as a student? So many of those guys, when they are 10, 15 years old, they don't really do very well in school. They flunk all their tests. They don't go to school every day. Eventually, they discover other type of life. They work too hard, and they just skip school. And they just repeat the cycle of their parents. And they have their own babies. They still live in the same community. Like my friends, all of them were living in the same place with their parents or very close by. So for us, as Vision Trust, to see those, those guys, 20 of them, in our program, moving through the years and being able to say, okay, here you are, our high school is a great success. And we're very happy and proud to uh, be able to say that. Uh, in, within our programs, we also are trying very hard to feed our children. And, and you may find this, you may not understand it very well, but uh, it's very sensitive. We realize that Many of our children, if we don't give them a breakfast every morning in our schools, they probably will wait until lunchtime without anything in their stomach. So we have children in the past that were sleeping in the class, they were getting very sick, dizzy, and headaches, and we realized they just came to school without breakfast. Or they came in the afternoon and they only have a very simple lunch for the, for, for the, in their houses. So in every program that we have, we are working hard to make sure that we cover some of the nutritional needs with some food and some vitamin. We also take care of their medical care and whatever we can do. It's not a perfect program, but we do it as much as we can. We uh, provide a vitamin for them and we take care of the dental care with teams like this. And some guys from Ohio already uh, came down in the past to help us do that. And one of the most important, if not the most important thing that we do is that we tell them about Jesus. We know that they could be educated, that they could have food and vitamins, and they could have games. But if they don't get to know Jesus, then it's, it's almost like wasting our time. So every day in our schools, and it's a law in my country, for the whole Dominican country, Dominican Republic, you have every day in every public school, in every private school, you have to read the Bible verse to the students. So as a Christian school that we have, we take more advantage of that, and we. Uh, have a chapel time every Friday. Every morning we have an opening ceremony where we have worship, we praise the Lord, we share the, the Bible with them. So it's a whole Christian uh, idea where they hear and they know about Jesus. And eventually we believe they become Christian. We also provide an uh, environment of love and fun for them. Being a, growing in a place like that with so much limitation, you don't get to go to the pool or to the beach or to the movie very often because of your parents' possibilities. So we try uh, to create uh, field trips to park, things like that, so they can enjoy and have fun. This is one of our programs, one of our children, one of our programs. This is a group of children that we're helping in one of our places uh, where it's, it's a community that is by a, by a river. And many of those children in that place, I don't know exactly why, they are deaf. They don't hear. So this is a ministry that we're uh, blessing with right now 120 kids that are deaf in the beginning of the public. Now, my last picture, this is a guy, he is Dominican, trust me. He's my son, that's an Oscar. He's almost six years old. And this is his picture of his uh, graduation of I Know How to Read picture. It was uh, last July. 
he went through uh, K5, K4, K3, and now he's in first grade. And when I look at my son, uh, it's, a, it's a great commotion for me. It's a, it's a blessing. It's such, a, such a great thing because even though he is my own son and I grew up and I went through all of this situation growing up in my family, I see that because the Lord gave me the opportunity first to know him, to know Jesus and he's in my heart and get an education and get a job where I can actually provide for him. He is not in the need of going to a mechanic garage when he is 11 to buy his first book. He's already have a lot of good books already and he's been doing a lot of things already I, even though he's only almost six years old. And I can tell that his possibilities for the futures are way much better than what I had when I was growing up. And this is what we are looking for to see and do in the children in my country through your support, through your help in the sponsorship. That our children could go to school, they get to know about Jesus, they get an education, they get fed. So the children that are coming after them, and even for themselves, uh, are much better and we can change their life forever and the future. So this is all possible because of people like you and uh, of your sponsorship. So thank you much, so much for doing it. Nelson, thank you so much uh, for sharing, for being here. Um, we just really appreciate it. And uh, we, we appreciate you sharing your heart and, and just getting to know the story behind all this. Um, as we wrap up this morning, I'm going to 